the ruthless exploits of Shang kings are legend no more. We now know they were very real indeed. The Shang's quest for dynasty dates back to the very beginnings of Western civilization. Here, isolated in the east, the most remote of ancient civilizations was flourishing in a land called China. Most Westerners see Chinese culture beginning in the capital city of Beijing. Here, within the walls of the Forbidden City, the destinies of countless peasants were decided by a succession of all-powerful emperors. But for Harvard University's Robert Murachik, China's emperors were heir to a much older tradition, a tradition born of power, human sacrifice, and the mysterious rites of the Shang. The early dynasties of the Bronze Age in China were mentioned in great detail in the ancient texts from the Zhou and Han dynasties, but they were mentioned in almost a legendary way. The Shang dynasty moved from the stuff of legend to the stuff of archaeological fact with the discovery of oracle bones and their excavation at the very important Shang capital near Anyang. The city of Anyang lies 300 miles southwest of Beijing. Here in 1928, Chinese archaeologists made an extraordinary find. Deep in the countryside, workers uncovered a cache of tortoise shells. The shells were covered with mysterious inscriptions, strange prophecies written in ancient Chinese characters. After years of research, the first pictures of Shang court life began to emerge. 4,000 years ago, royal priests used heat to crack the shells, then interpreted the cracks, predicting the outcome of a battle, the birth of a prince, or the success of a great hunt. The shells also listed the names of Shang kings. Rulers long thought as mythic as King Arthur and his court were now part of China's history. The discovery inspired the Chinese to widen their search. This was the startling result. Archaeologists at Anyang discovered a series of royal Shang mausoleums. On ramps that led to the tombs, excavators were greeted by welcoming parties of headless skeletons. The missing skulls were found inside the grisly sanctuaries arranged in mysterious patterns. Some 1300 years before the birth of Christ, Shang kings built their empire on a foundation of human sacrifice. Critical to Shang religion was the belief that sacrificial offerings had to be made to the deities or the ancestral spirits. This was the source of their wisdom. In order to obtain this wisdom, the Shang were required to present sacrifices to their ancestors. The sacrifices included meat offerings, wine offerings, hence the uh, huge numbers of bronze ritual vessels that we find. The Shang valued bronze more highly than gold. In these vessels, the kings would offer tribute to their gods, and royal control over the resources that each bronze required was absolute. They were a symbol of the divine right of Chinese kings that would, in later years, be called the Mandate of Heaven.
The Shang employed sophisticated technology to perfect this most sacred of their crafts. While Mediterranean artisans were only beginning to experiment with metals, the Chinese had already elevated bronze casting to an art. From clay molds packed in earth would come richly detailed works of art. Shang bronzes were covered with symbols of haunting terror, but these powerful rulers were also capable of intimacy. Wu Ding was a Shang king in the 13th century BC. Many of his greatest achievements, military and political, were credited to his favorite wife, Fu Hao. In peace, she provided over rituals dedicated to the spirits and royal ancestors. In war, this remarkable woman was the Shang's greatest general. She led an army of 13,000 warriors into battle against two enemy clans, defeating both in great victories for the Shang. According to legend, when Fu Hao died, the king was heartbroken. He wept openly at her funeral and mourned her passing until his death. Over time, the kingdom they'd helped to create would perish as well. The Shang aristocracy was addicted to hunting and warfare. By 1000 BC, they'd found a more insidious addiction. Alcohol. We know from later historical texts that the last Shang king was very, very fond of drink. In fact, the descriptions describe him as having built ponds filled with alcoholic beverages and hanging slabs of meat and venison in the forest so he could go out and party and banquet whenever he wanted to, to the great uh, destitution of his kingdom. It's also quite possible that the Shang use of bronze ritual vessels with a very high lead content also had physiological effects that decreased their capacity to rule. The inscriptions etched on the heat-cracked shells at Anyang had opened a new window onto Shang royal life. Their kings were ruthless. One, Dicene was said to have invented hideous tortures. Hot coals were poured into a hollow cylinder and victims seared to death. Whether such reports are fact or fiction may never be known. It is known that D. Sin was not alone in his quest for dynasty. At a site called Songxing Dui, a competing culture was discovered, a people who vied with the Shang for the mandate of heaven. These Songxing Dui masks were found smashed to pieces, part of a mysterious ritual.
They were reassembled here in the city of Chengdu at the Institute of Archaeology. Over 5,000 fragments were pieced together to restore this colossal nine-foot bronze. Conservationist Zhang Guangli was astonished that such lavishly decorated sculptures would be intentionally destroyed by their creators. When I drew the statue, I had many thoughts. I was curious there had been such a great statue so many years ago. Also, I felt that it was very mysterious due to its masks and outfits. The more I drew it, the more I felt like I was reading a wordless history book. These once shattered masterpieces seem to be evidence of a more sober approach to power. While the Shang severed human heads as a show of force and authority, the rulers of San Shengdui conserved their population by decapitating statues instead. But kings rich enough to commission such extravagant bronzes were also capable of mustering formidable armies. Cultures like the San Shengdui may have weakened the Shang and thus set the stage for a new dynasty, a people called the Zhou. A thousand years before the birth of Christ, 300 years before the founding of Rome, Zhou culture flourished. They established their empire from a capital near the present-day city of Xi'an. Here, the great King Wu secured his dynasty by creating China's first system of justice for the common people. This Zhou bronze details an ancient lawsuit and the punishment that followed. The inscription is interpreted by Dr. Han Wei at the Shaanxi History Museum. There was a man who was accused of slandering his master. The judge ordered that his crime would be written on his face with special ink, but the sentence was reduced to 500 pieces of bronze and 500 lashes of a leather belt. Zhou kings created a feudal system based on the teachings of Confucius. The king was considered a father figure who entrusted relatives with vast tracts of land. <laughs> 